Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and fun, informative recipe tutorials. Today, I thought I'd do a recipe that has been requested by you through the Jillian Butler YouTube community. It is the one, the only, humble New York baked cheesecake. If you like my video, please, Click on the thumbs up icon and subscribe. Thank you for that. There are so many different versions of cheesecake around the world, like Italian ricotta cheesecake, Greek yogurt based cheesecakes, Japanese souffle style cheesecake, the no bake cheesecakes, and even raw vegan cheesecakes. And they are all loved in their own right. But I'm gonna go out on a limb and say something that may perhaps ruffle a few feathers. I think the New York Baked Cheesecake is the best version of the cheesecake in the world. And I can't get used to the idea of a cold set, no baked or gelatin based cheesecake. I'm sorry, it's my humble opinion and everyone has one. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. So, let's get going with my classic New York Baked Cheesecake recipe. Actually, it's probably the best option. This will be a two part recipe. First part is the base crust and the next part is the cheesecake batter. If you have a base crust sorted already, then don't be shy, skip ahead to the main event. When I lived in Texas, we made cheesecake bases from a box of graham crackers and melted butter because it was cheap to do so. But living in Australia or other parts of the world, you don't have graham crackers at the supermarket for a dollar a box. So when I started my cake shop, I decided that we could make graham crackers ourselves from scratch. So I'm gonna teach you how to get that same classic taste of the graham cracker crust at home. And it is so worth it. Now, if you don't want to mess with this step, then buy whatever hard, crunchy cookies you think would taste delicious as a base crust, like shortbreads, digestives, coffee joys, nankatai cookies, Oreos without the filling, sugar cookies, Russian tea cakes, chips ahoy, pecan sandies, Mexican wedding cookies, arrowroot biscuits, nutter butters without the filling, chocolate chip cookies, ginger snaps, Anzac biscuits, chocolate cookies. What, that's enough? Okay, anyway, buy whatever crunchy cookie you think will taste delicious as the base crust. You crush them up into small crumbs and use just enough melted butter to make the mixture stick together when you press it into your pan. Gather all of your base ingredients together. Butter, brown sugar, honey, plain flour, wholemeal or whole wheat flour, wheat germ, salt, baking soda, and cinnamon. Your butter should be room temperature and soft when you put it into the mixer, followed by your brown sugar and honey. Start your mixer on low until it all comes together, then increase to medium high speed until the butter mixture is light and fluffy, which could take up to two to three minutes. In between, scrape your bowl down to ensure the ingredients are mixing properly together. You don't want to have a big chunk of butter left on your paddle or you'll have a lumpy mix. While you wait for your butter to cream, mix all of the dry ingredients together into one bowl. You can do this through a sifter or just take a spoon and hand mix. You're just aiming to evenly distribute the baking soda and salt throughout the flours to ensure an even rise. When your butter is ready, then add the flour mixture into your mixer. Oops, forgot the cinnamon. Definitely want to start this one on a low speed or you'll have a snowstorm up in the kitchen. Hashtag not my idea of fun. Just give the bowl a scrape down. That way your final product is consistent with no lumps of butter or missed flour or sugar. Keep your mixer on low speed and let it get to a crumbly, moist texture. Just like when you pick up sand after it's been raining. Now. All you need to do is the pinch test to make sure it's ready. Take a fingerful of the crust and pinch it between your fingers. 
If it sticks together and stays together after you throw it back in the bowl, then it's ready. If it's not quite there yet, put your bowl back on the mixer and give it another burst of mixing on low. If you've made your own base from different cookies and it's still not coming together, add another teaspoon of melted butter to your mix. Next step is to bake the base inside of your pan. I always use a springform pan for cheesecakes because it's just so easy to take out. The unique feature about them is the locking lever on the side of the pan wall, which allows you to open the side wall of the pan and release it from the base plate. Now, because I don't like cleaning and I want to make things as easy on myself as I can, I line the base plate of a springform pan with baking paper. It also takes away the chance of the cookie base sticking to the pan later on. Now you're ready to get your base crust in. I'm going to be a bit pedantic and trim the baking paper around the pan so it looks pretty. I think it helps with the baking. Well, not really, but I'll allow myself to believe silly things like that and you can too. Pour your base crust into the springform pan and evenly distribute it amongst the surface. Try and get it as even and flat as you can. I use my hands to gauge this mostly. Sometimes I use the bottom of a flat cup measure or I can use the back of a soup spoon or a spatula. Then you press it down till it's fully compacted. Bake your crust for 15 to 20 minutes or until your crust looks golden brown and cookie-like. Then take it out and let it fully cool down. Putting your cheesecake batter into your crust while it's still hot will increase your chances of having a soggy bottom. Soggy crust bottom. Soggy bottom crust. I, I mean, a crust base that's soggy. You know what I meant. Let's get your ingredients ready for the cheesecake batter. You'll need cream cheese, caster sugar or granulated sugar or white sugar, plain flour, sour cream, whole eggs and some yolks, vanilla essence or the seeds scraped from one vanilla bean pod, and pure cream, sometimes called heavy cream or whipping cream. Into your mixer, add your cream cheese that's been softened slightly. I would take it out of the fridge for at least 30 minutes before using it. This will help it to be a good host when adding the other ingredients. Now, before you add the sugar and the flour, here's a trick. Mix your flour into the sugar, either with a spoon or by sifting it. This makes sure you don't have any flour lumps in your batter. When your sugar flour mix is ready, then you can add it to the cream cheese and begin mixing on low. Gradually increase the speed to medium high because we want to cream this mixture and build a little bit of air into the batter but not too much as it is a dense cheesecake and we want to get it to a smoother consistency that's ready to take on more liquidy sour cream without causing the cream cheese to become lumpy. Please don't rush this first step. When it's looking smooth and less heavy, add your sour cream and mix on low first, then medium. See how I'm mixing it vigorously, but not so high that I'm getting big air bubbles? You don't really want air bubbles in your cheesecake batter because it'll cause the cheesecake to rise really high and then fall and cave when it cools. By preventing the air buildup in this batter, you prevent sunken cake middle. Add your eggs one at a time and scrape down after each addition. This recipe calls for two whole eggs and four egg yolks. Why? Because the batter is very much like a baked custard that needs the binding properties of the protein in the egg, but if you add too much of the egg whites, I find that you're left with that mysterious eggy quiche aftertaste that no one likes. Plus, the yolks have an emulsifying power that helps ingredients bind to each other, creating a super smooth batter. Think of how yolks are used to make a smooth, creamy mayonnaise out of oil and a few other ingredients that don't really get along. What do you do with all of those leftover egg whites, you say? You use it in an egg white omelet for the diet that you're going to be starting after you eat this cheesecake, that's what. 
Anywho, I digress. When the eggs are fully incorporated, add your vanilla and then your cream. Your batter should resemble a pourable crepe batter like this. Before you pour the mixture into your springform pan, you'll need to line the outsides of the pan with aluminium foil for two reasons. One, to protect the delicate batter from the direct heat of the oven. And two, to waterproof the outside of your pan so you can bake it inside of a water bath. I use a double thickness that forms a cross, but if you use heavy duty foil, then you may only need a single layer. Just be careful that you don't puncture the foil, allowing water to get into your pan. Just crunch it all together to form a tight jacket over the pan and fold over any extras so it falls below the top of the pan. Now you're ready to pour your batter into your prepared crust. Put your cheesecake into a large roasting pan or a sheet pan with high sides. Place in the middle of your preheated oven, then fill the roasting pan with boiling water up to the halfway mark of your springform pan. Don't put cold water in there because that will take the cheesecake and the water twice as long to heat up and get to oven temperature. Bake your cheesecake at 150 Celsius or 300 Fahrenheit for two hours. Then turn your oven off and leave it there for an additional hour to allow the cheesecake to gradually cool down and keep baking. After the three hour bake and cool down, take your cheesecake out of the oven and remove the foil from your pan. See how evenly the cake baked? This is due to my not mixing too much air into the batter, a low baking temperature and the water bath all helping it to not crack. Chill your cake for at least four hours before removing the sides of your pan. When you're ready to unpan, take the locking lever and open it and gently pry the sides away from the cake. Take a palette knife and wiggle it in between the cake and the base plate. Lift up and remove the baking paper. And place your cheesecake on a beautiful, colourful plate. Garnish with your fruit of choice, mine's raspberry. I even made a raspberry coolie or sauce to serve with it. Okay, hot tip of the day. When you cut slices of the cheesecake, do it with a long, slim knife and heat it with boiling water. This allows the knife to glide and melt the cake, making beautiful smooth slices rather than crumbling, tearing chunks. After each slice, dip your knife back into the boiling water and clean it off, dry it, then slice again. It seems like a bit of trouble, but it's so worth it when you see the slice on the plate and your guests will be uber impressed at how professional your dessert looks. There it is, my classic New York baked cheesecake, served with Chantilly cream and raspberry coulis. Now it's time to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Cookies, ov ovaries, <laughs> ovary cookies. What do you do with all of the leftover egg whites? 
you use them in an egg white omelette that you're going... <laughs> I got this.